There he is, a wanderer. Oh, mate. Yeah, good. So you've had, what, three or four hours sleep? At three, most? three hours, mate. Luckily, Dad volunteered to drive down from Melbourne. I mean, that just saved me not having to drive the last three hours. All right, let's get this thing down there, eh? Yeah, I normally like to go actually pretty lightweight. The challenge is choosing the lightweight gear out of all of the gear that I have in total. But I finished work at about six o'clock last night, so I had a bit of a scramble to throw this stuff together. Where are you going? Not uh, across. Tuzzy, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Tim, actually, the man who's supposed to be here with us, he just sent, uh, all the best, brother, exclamation mark. So I'm just sending back, thanks, mate, pushing off. Paddling when it's right is just fun and enjoyable and a real grand tour. This stretch of sea kayaking is just so iconic that you just got to go and do it. And to bugger if you wanted a notch in your belt or, or whatever. Bass Strait's really special. It's not like other straits. It's got all these islands linking the mainland to Tasmania and they're paddleable. You know, you, you can do your jumps, you do your crossings and link it all together. The Aboriginals did this 8,000 years ago at low tide with the help of canoes. And so this is a modern version of that. So there's this really nice symmetry. As you're paddling along, you can think of this amazing historical context. Yeah, it was, it was a different first day. We didn't get anywhere near as far as where we thought we would and it was raining and- It was a bit more testing than I'd expect. Two or three, yeah, chunks of wind that were way above what was expected, you know? Yeah. When you get gusts of 25 plus knots in pockets that just blow you sideways, you think, what, what? This is the weather window? With the, the updated forecast, um, which says the next three days are looking pretty positive for us. Yeah. I don't think there's a need to, to push it today. Yeah. So. I don't know about you guys, but the sleep, the sl just having eight hours sleep was Gold. just beautiful. Makes you know, rain on the, the rain on the yeah. tent. <laughs> but off to refuge anyway, down the southernmost tip of the mainland of Australia. I've always been attracted to a Robinson Crusoe type life. Get somewhere and make it up and make do. Sea kayaking's not quite that way. You've got all this stuff with you and it's about getting into habits. We started to unpack our stuff and really settle in to the expedition. Take your shoes off. Cook a batch of soup for your mates. The expedition had started and it was such a relief. How are you feeling, mate? Yeah, pretty good, mate. You finally had a dump? I did, yes. <laughs> so I'm a little bit lighter, which is less weight to carry over to Hogan Island, which is great. Geez, you're good. Uh, I was going to not do my teeth this morning, so good on you. I'll give it a go. <laughs> Craig and Paul had caught us up and we were going to meet them three kilometres offshore. Oi! They tried paddling across Bass Strait the year before but had run out of time and a weather window. I think Craig was out to prove himself right and others wrong that he could do it. Paul was really reluctant to tell us his story and was only ever caught on camera by surprise but they seem like really nice guys. This trip is about crossings, going from one land mass to the next. Wind and tides dictate everything. If you stuff it up, you end up going backwards. We had to reach Hogan Island at slack tide. It was really nice having all the lads together uh, and was in fact the first time Matt had met Paul and Craig. Five men on an island the only people there that night. It's probably the closest thing I'll experience to exploration, true exploration, that feeling of rolling out your bed 
on a place so rarely slept by other humans. Today was pretty tough, really tough for me. I got horribly seasick. My head started to go, real pain, real deep pain. So I just had to dig in, look at the horizon and just paddle. If I stopped, if anyone spoke to me, if I lost my train of thought, oh, I was really close to being sick a lot. The crossing today was 50K or so in pretty good conditions, but still 50K. I mean, Hogan Island, you couldn't see it. And then it started out as this tiny dot in the distance and now we're on it and it's pretty big. Considering I'm in Australia for the first time, I thought it'd be great to try the local produce. So I've got some Vegemite. I think it's like Marmite, but vegetarian. Yes, it's okay, it's Marmite. A flat sea is a really haunting space. We were in a high pressure system. We knew it was gonna be dead calm. This big rolling sea took a day off. You see scale, or you seem to see scale more, given the wideness of everything. We were the only ones making lines that day. We'd landed on the beautiful Deal Island, smack bang in the middle of Bass Strait. Two crossings down, two to go. So this is Stephen and Martina. Do you call yourself lighthouse keepers now or is it just no, ca caretakers. 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 caretakers? And these are your tomatoes from the garden up the road? The yeah, it is. Yes. Isn't that great? Yes. And that horrible view out the window. Uh, coffee, please. Two, two coffees, two teas. Two teas, yeah. I'll bring the milk here from there. Beautiful. So you call this a gentleman's wash, and Paul calls it a, what did you call it before? A, a bird bath, he's just a sponge bath. This is kitty litter <laughs> box, which is good. For oil spills. <laughs> yeah. Day eight and day four of Deal Island. We've done more land days than we have days at sea. I've had lots of cups of tea. Beauty time. Checked the weather an awful lot of times and almost got into the habit of being here rather than the habit of being a transient and one day to the next landing at a different place. I don't know how I feel about it. all this waiting, waiting, waiting. And the biggest problem we have considering leaving the island is that we've got our biggest crossing to deal with next. I mean there are certainly worse places to be stuck. As you can see. We can analyse the wind and the data to death, whereas sometimes you've just got to look out to sea and maybe know what's happening in the next few days or really trust your cloud judgement and go and get there and maybe do it a little tougher, but do it a week earlier. I've been asked to make a new mallet for the garden. Cool. Thoreau once said, Never judge a man by the size of his house, but the size and quality of his sheds. So I like this. Check out the old ropes and you really come in here and fix stuff. Made a new uh, tomato steak banger. A mallet of sorts. Yeah, something quite satisfying about uh, Having some, you, you've got an outcome for the day rather than just sleep or reading a book or, or even paddle kilometres to an extent. This is going to shade some garden and create them some salad and it has, it has a fair bit more worth to it, I think. Anyway, when you find little projects to do in these lay days, it just adds more worth to time in lieu, I suppose. 
waiting for the wind, waiting for the wind, waiting for the swell. And what a beautiful little garden to work in, you know. Anyway, nice little project. probably a little bit too late and uh, knew we were pretty slow from the get-go and, and out we went and it was kind of a you know every man had to just get into his own head and grind away for the day. 